And now, who is our next guest, please? Herb, here's our next guest from Brooklyn, New York, Mr. Ralph Cramden. How do you do, Mr. Hamden? Now, there's nothing for you to be nervous about. Just relax. We're all your friends, and I'm trying to help you. Just relax and take it easy. It's really a pleasure shaking hands with you, Mr. Cramden. That's fine. Thank you very much. Now, tell me, sir, what do you do for a living? I bribe a dust. You bribe a dust? A dust a bribe. A dust a bribe. Oh, I see. You're a bus driver. Is yeah. that it? Yeah, that's it. Well, now, there's nothing for you to be nervous about, Mr. Cramden. Just relax and take it easy, and you'll get along a lot better. Now, tell me, sir, are you married? Yes. You're married. And what is your wife's name? Mrs. Cramden. Well, that's fine. Now, her first name, I meant. Her? Who? Oh, oh her. Oh, her. Uh, Alice. Alice Cramden, uh-huh. Now, I believe the announcer said you are from Brooklyn. Have you lived in Brooklyn all your life, sir? Uh, uh, my uh, mother, uh, the father, they, they were there. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Cramden. You know, I have a great deal of respect for bus drivers. It's always amazed me how you fellows who have this tremendous responsibility and the, the, the tremendous number of people that you have to deal with and the big machine, how you manage to remain so courteous and kind and considerate all the time. Yes, sir. Well, of course, there are exceptions. For example, <laughs> the other day I was standing on Madison Avenue in the rain waiting for a bus, and as this bus driver bore down on me, I signaled for him to stop. And you know, instead of stopping, he went right by, went through a puddle and splashed mud all over me. Was that you? <laughs> Mr. Cramden, I sure hope you win some money tonight because I've got a cleaning bill for you. And you know, now it's time for you to select a category. And I want you to be very careful in selecting this category because all the questions you'll be asked come from this one category. So take your time and make up your mind what your selection is going to be. I'm, 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 popular songs. Popular songs. Very good, sir. Now I'm sorry to interrupt her, but our time is up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cramden. We seem to have run out of time, but we'd like you to come back next week and try for the first hurdle on the way to the $99,000 answer. Can you be with us? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Cramden, and good night, sir. Thank you. Oh, no, no, Mr. Cramden. No. This way. Good night, Mr. Cramden. Good night. I got it. Don't fence me in. Written by Cole Porter for the picture Hollywood Canteen in the year 1944, produced by Warner Brothers. Correct. <laughs> Boy, I feel you're hotter than a firecracker. But you run into that master sermon, I'm, uh, he's going to run out of hurdles. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did do with uh, Mrs. Manicotti. I left her speechless. Yeah. She did everything in her power to stick me. <laughs> I guess the English name to every one of the Italian songs that she sang. Oh, boy. Well, I bought her a few old movie type songs and things like that along. Don't look at the sheet music. No cheating, not. I don't have to look, pal. All right. You just play them and I'll name them. All right. up on the songs. Now, let's not waste any time. Get going. All right. <laughs> Will you wait a minute, please? Why must you always play da 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 before you go in and play the song I'm trying to get? I told you once, I told you a hundred times. It's the only way I can warm up before I play the piano. A pitcher warms up before he pitches a ball game? I gotta warm up that way before I play the piano. I hope I don't have to tell you this again. Are you ready? Go ahead and play. Uh. <laughs> that's all, that's all, that's all. 
Don't Shuffle Off the Buffalo, written by Warren and Dubin for a little picture called 42nd Street. The year was 1932. Absolutely right. All right, here's another one. Don't look at the music now. Don't need it, my friend. Don't need it. Now, this is a little change in tempo. Don't let it throw you. All righty. written by Johnny Mercer and Richard Whiting for a picture called Ready, Willing, and Able. The year was 1937. Absolutely correct. Boy, you are. <laughs> All right. This one might throw you. This one uh, goes back a little ways. Ready? Uh, Well, why don't you shut up in here? You're driving everybody crazy. I'm not driving anybody crazy. You're just jealous, that's all. And do you know why you're jealous? Because you know that at this time, tomorrow night, my picture will be on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Well, so will mine. For killing you. <laughs> Ralph. Hey, you loud mouth. Now you woke up my wife. <laughs> I realize that I cannot talk to Ralph because he is stubborn and unreasonable. But I have always had great respect for your sense of fair play, and so I appeal to you. It is late. People would like to go to sleep. I think you should stop playing the piano. And I am sure that you will agree with me, Ed, because you have always been fair and considerate. You are a reasonable man. Don't let her soft soak you. Don't let her soft soak you. You're just as unreasonable as I am. <laughs> Go ahead and play. If you touch that piano again, I'll lose all my respect for you. Go ahead and play, Norton, if you don't want to lose my friendship. <clears throat> oh, I'm on the spot. If I play the piano, I lose her respect. If I don't play, I lose your friendship. Why, oh, why was I blessed with this musical talent? <laughs> I don't care if it is the police. Let them in. What's the matter, Quiet, everyone. What about a coma, Bella? Did a time for thank you, I have it. Take me back to Sorrento, 1898. Written by Ernesto de Quisto. Mm, <laughs> I give up. Well, well, that's the way it goes. The whole house has gone crazy. Going crazy? I suppose she's crazy because she wants to help me. Give me a little chance. Help me out with the names of songs. That's a little more than I can say for you. Ralph, I've been trying to help you by being sensible. If you had listened to me in the first place, you could have avoided putting all this pressure on yourself. For the last time, Alice, I'm telling you, I'm going for the $99,000 question. For the last time, Ralph, I'll be very proud if you win the 600 bucks. $600? Peanuts, peanuts. What am I going to do with peanuts? Eat them like any other elephant. <laughs> Welcome to America's most exciting show, The $99,000 Answer. And now, Tom, who is our first guest, please? Sir, our first guest, ready to leap the first hurdle on his way to the $99,000 Answer, is our bus driver from Brooklyn, Mr. Ralph Cramden. How do you do, Mr. Cramden? It's nice to do. see you again. It's nice to be back here. Now, I remember last week we had just got to the point in the program where you had selected your category, Popular Song. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Now, you've had a whole week to prepare. Tell me, have you done much studying? Oh, just a little. <laughs> oh, just, uh, just a little. Spare time sort of thing. Sort huh? of spare time. I see. All right. No Let's sense get... of going over what you already know. <laughs> I guess you're right, sir. <laughs> That's right. Now, let's get on with our competition. May we have the card, please, explaining the game and the first question. Thank you. 
I have here your first question. Now, Mr. Cramden, you know how the $99,000 answer works. We start with the first question worth $100, then our second hurdle is worth $600. After that, our hurdles become higher, and naturally, the questions become a little more difficult. Our fourth hurdle is worth $6,187.50, and if you answer that, the next one is worth $12,375. Now then, we keep rolling along and doubling the money and funnel. Finally, you get to the $99,000 answer. Now, you can stop any time you feel like it and take what money you've won up to that point. Now, is that all clear, Mr. Cramden? It certainly is, and if I may, I'd like to make a little statement. Why, surely, go right ahead. I intend to go straight on, forge ahead to the $99,000 answer. <laughs> That's wonderful, Mr. Cramden. I, uh... I think it's only fair to point out to you, though, that you don't need to make that decision now. You can stop at any time you want to and take the money you become. Well, I made up my mind, and I thought you might as well know it, and I know it, and they know it, and everybody knows it. <laughs> I see. Well, sir, tell me, have you discussed this at home? Have you talked it over with your wife? Yes, I did, and regardless, I am going for the $99,000. <laughs> I see. Well, that's quite a decision. I guess you really know your popular songs. Well, right? I don't like to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Cramden, I wish you a lot of luck, and here's your first question for $100. Are you ready? I certainly am. All right, Mr. Cramden, for $100, who is the composer of Swanee River? <laughs> Swanee River. That's right, Swanee River. Can we have a few bars of Swanee River, Jose? <laughs> That's Swanee River. That's right. Now, who's the composer? Your time's running out. Hurry up. You better take a guess. Hum and hum, 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 hum. Ed Norton. <laughs> oh, I'm. Terribly sorry, Mr. Cramden. No, the correct answer is Stephen Foster. But thanks so much. You've been a wonderful contestant and a swell sport. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Cramden. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Cramden. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you, Irving Cairn. Irving Cale and Sammy Fain, 1938. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Cramden, it's all over now. It's I... all over now. Bassy Simon, 1927. <laughs> No, no, good night, Mr. Cranberry. Good, good night, good night. There were two songs, good night. It was Good Night, Irene, written by Lomax and Ledbetter. Good Night, Sweetheart, written by Rudy Valley and Ray Noble. No. Then there was another... Situation. Please. Please. Please was sung by Ben Crosby and... <laughs> <laughs>